Welcome back to the class. Last time we discussed about the cognitive task analysis and very first component that is hierarchical task analysis we discussed. So today we will take the next part which is allocation of function. Now from this nomenclature allocation on, of function you understand what exactly we are going to do over here. From the nomenclature it is very clear that we are going to allocate very specific components, very specific function to different person or different machineries which is present in the system. Again I would like to give you a reminder that when we discuss about system we always need to understand what is Argo system and what are the major components of any Argo system. So you must remember it that we have simple system and complex system. In simplest system we have one man, one machine and one in a single environment. Whereas in complex system we have more than one man or we can call them as operator as well or more than one machine in a particular environment right. So here in this method we are trying to understand how we can allocate the functions in the, to the individual operator or to the individual machine in a particular system so that we can understand where the problem lies and where the intervention point can initiate ok. So it will give again a kind of intervention direction ok. So let us start with the understanding or little bit about the uh, history or where do you use it all this uh, no introduction component. So allocation of system function or function allocation, socio-technical allocation, we can give all these varieties of nomenclature is a process, okay. It is a particular process which decide to allocate job, task, system function or responsibility. So it is it's varieties of things, okay. So all these things we are going to identify during the process. So it, it gives a decision, it decides how to allocate job, task, system function or responsibility to human either to the human, human means man component or operator of the system and the automated agent. Here it is machine, right. So how we are going to do that? So applied in socio-technical this particular process that system allocation function, this particular method is very popular in the socio-technical work environment. In 1950, you know, uh, it is first being introduced formally. So this process is not like all of a sudden it, uh, you know, invented or something like that. It was in practice in different way. However, formally in 1950, it was being uh, introduced uh, formally uh, for the air traffic control. So, you know, allocation of function, this particular approach, okay. So, we are allocating specific function to a specific person or to a specific machine. How do we do that? This particular formalized method was being introduced in, in very initially in the air traffic control, okay. However, in 1982 there are evidences that you know uh, we used it for the nuclear power generation. Here you understand that every system that we are talking about uh, as an example are all are very very complex system complex in nature the whole system is very complex in nature. So we have to be very careful whenever we are using this type of methodology. So it is highly appropriate to apply the you know the whole paradigm uh, to the problem of determining which function to allocate to the operator and which function to allocate to the machine or the automated system. <laughs> so based on the experience, based on the data available with you, uh, literature of course and the uh, SOP, 
standard operating procedure you need to give these allocation and depending on the demand of the whole job demand of the whole task how do we do that we will uh, take it in the next all these slides if we talk about uh, allocation of function this particular types of methods two are very very common one is table of relative merit another is hypothetical deducive model okay so this hdm and the trm are very very common however there are some more like you know psycho psychometric approach computational aids etc so let us take one by one first is table of relative method so that is called trm so what what exactly it does this uh, list is you know being continually being updated it's very vast list okay so you give the relative rating to each task each component and you start allocating their function okay so it, it's not that first one go it will so depending on the complexity depending on the particular work uh, how the process is being upgraded this will keep, keep on updating so trm method employs the task uh, dichotomy approach so either the researcher researcher need to decide in a particular function is human is good in this part or computer is computer means machine is good in this part so dichotomy okay either one either human or operator so it's it's not that you can give both together it is not okay so either you give the task to the human or you decide okay no here in this particular task the machine is more important machine is more functioning so you give the task to the um, uh, uh, the computer okay so that way you have very clear cut differentiation so all of these type of approaches characterize the differences in abilities between human and machine so you need to understand what is the capability to perform which job by machine or by the operator or human so when these differences have been determined decision can be made to perform the prescription of this design of the system so once we decide it you know now you give it to the designer and you tell that this is the requirement so this part need to be handled by human this part need to handle by machine and then based on that understanding designers or definitely the researcher what will do they will design the whole system so uh, uh, at the very initial stage we are very clear in uh, if you are using trm that how which component to be performed by which portion either by com human or by the machine then second very important uh, like you know method that is the hdm so other two that psychomet uh, you know psychometric approaches and computational aids also people use however trm and hdm more uh, prominently present in the literature so that's why i am giving the example so uh, of these two only so it consists of mainly five stages so first is specification in which the system requirements are clarified okay so how the system requirements are present you you should clarify that in the very beginning then in the next stage what they do the identification in which system functions are identified and defined in terms of inputs and outputs that characterize the various operation okay third is hypothesization of solution so you are actually in the initial third step you are hypothesizing how the solution will be in which the hypothetical design solutions are advanced by various specialist team here involvement of the specialist team is very important okay <laughs> so when you are doing this you need to have a, a specific group of people who will help you to develop those small small components okay 
Once this part is done, what you have to do? You have to do the testing and evaluation in which the experimentation and data gathering are undertaken to check the unity of functional configuration for the overall design okay so overall whatever the designs you have developed so system design product design whatever you have developed so you can do the testing over here in the last stage what you do you do the optimization in which design interactions are made to correct errors so whatever errors were there while performing so first you are testing right so in the testing phase you get data and you understand that you know, where the errors may happen. So, from that perspective, what you do? You try to do the optimization. It is not that error free, okay. It is not possible. You cannot make it as error free. However, you can optimize it till when the productivity is uh, achieved as small as per the requirement. So, here beauty of this uh, method is that you are doing anyway for all ergonomics method or ergonomics intervention it is always desirable the optimization of the process or optimizing the system not the it is not possible to get the maximum level that is not possible ok. So, optimization input output and desired requirement ok. Now, I will take you to the exact steps how we can do the you know allocation of functions first is first step is task analysis now this task analysis you can get the data from your earlier hierarchical task analysis okay so when we practice hierarchical task analysis we create a tree right we create a tree and where you know uh, the top most functions are on the uh, top and then slowly you branch them out and you know base level where we reach uh, then we, we get the small element which is not possible to break further so from the hierarchical task analysis the first step need to be achieved okay once task analysis data has been achieved or you gather information from hierarchical task analysis what you need to understand over here is the stakeholders analysis. So, you will try to understand what is what are the stakeholders view. Now, in hierarchical task analysis one component was there the derived table you verify or you, you validate it from the stakeholders. However, this stakeholder analysis is little bit different you just take a view from them however, you need not to incorporate those all views as per the uh, as they desire ok. I will discuss it in the next slide. The last stage is analysis of alternative allocation of function. So, whatever process we have generated from here, we need to give some kind of alternative uh, no, allocation. So, if you have 3, 4 varieties and then you have always you uh, know choice that uh, which is performing the best in uh, among all these. So, if you have more time you can create more iteratives and if you have less time you know you do 3, 4 and then you take take it further ok. So, you, you always generate alternative allocation on function and try to compare among each. So, in, in between uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 something like that you, you keep on comparing which is coming best you take it as the in uh, no uh, final product. So, let us go into detail about task analysis. The simplest method for uh, this particular step is hierarchical task analysis ok. So, you get data from HDM. It starts with identification of the purpose as we discussed in last class. Then it <laughs> logically considered which task need to be performed to achieve that particular task. For each task, the analyst need to identify which subtask need to be carried out to achieve the goal for specific task. So, the, here this part is very, very critical, ok. So, really we need to understand 
which need to be considered further how we can break them into the gold so if stakeholders do not agree on the purpose of the system more than one model you can consider as i mentioned you know alternative models the upper level of the hierarchy be the solution independent so as we mentioned that when we are creating the hierarchical task analysis table like you know tree or the the table where you no know, 1 2 3 4 like that we are creating the the top level portion the the which is you know on the above they are actually independent we are not going to disturb them okay so it's like we should not ask like what task is needed actually we are doing is the this is important whereas we never ask how it to be carried out because when we are answering about how what we are going to do we are creating lot of alternatives okay so the top level portion is independent from any analysis so it only says okay this is to be done okay on the top now then how it is happening that comes in your branches small components which is present on the bottom line and then you can have more alternative theory so once we uh, complete the hta what we do is the stakeholders analysis for allocation function here it is little perspective is little different as Uh, from the hta what it says the aim is to identify the sources of job satisfaction and dissatisfaction of any stakeholders okay so what we try to understand for a particular job for a particular task okay when they are performing it when they are involved in that particular job what is the kind of satisfaction and dissatisfaction so you know we can have facial expression understanding we can have um, different other physical recording to get these types of view and of course uh, here uh, we prefer to go for the observational technique because from observation you can have better understanding so suppose stakeholders are the employee right now if you ask directly what ab about their satisfaction level they may be reluctant to give you proper answer okay so here it is very the clever way is you observe them how they are performing their job are they satisfied or not of course verbal expression somewhere uh, it works but you know observing them and trying to get view from them is going to give you the very clear picture of this stakeholders you uh, know analysis okay because if you suppose you are asking how satisfied you are for this particular function and maybe the supervisor or the admin somebody from the managerial level are present and they may be reluctant to answer or if they know that they may feel that you know that answer may affect Uh, somewhere in their particular job then they will be hesitant to give you the proper so the result may be biased so here it's very important thing is you observe them you have you know indirect discussion and you get the data so for allocation of function the most relevant part of stakeholders analysis are identifying both the current knowledge okay whatever knowledge they have and the skill of the stakeholders and their potential gain new knowledge and the skill so you are trying to understand actually you are trying to compare okay whatever knowledge and skill they have and what is the potential available to gather new knowledge or new skill okay it can be done through interview it can be done through some questionnaire study or something like that okay so you are trying to understand that what is the current status of knowledge and skill of those stakeholders and what is their potentials okay to gather more knowledge and more skill so considering uh, these aspects like i am going to give you the descriptions all for all okay so you know the work are important to the stakeholder so we are going to read them one by one 
first is having a challenging job to do so you are going to understand this then opportunity to exercise uh, no very specific or specialized skill development of new skill so do you have any opportunity to develop you know new skill keeping the job as simple as possible definitely that's that's very important very, very much desirable thing removing tedious aspect of part of a particular work because if it is tedious in nature then you know people lose interest okay so enjoying interaction with other people so you are actually working in the socio technical system right so when you are talking about socio technical system it is very important to understand the peer interaction so avoiding interaction with other people either way then working as a member of a team so how do that working alone so which one is preferable then status gained from doing a specialist job so if you are doing a very specific task so do you gain any specific you know uh, status or not uh, status gained uh, from being a source of important information so very 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 important thing you know uh, they how do they feel that yes i am important to this whole function okay so this is very important to understand when we are you know analyzing the stakeholders then knowing what is going on uh, so in a whole system how in how much they are involved themselves how uh, proactively they are involved in the whole system so knowing exactly the scenario okay so that understanding is there or not uh, no pride in contribution to a successful product or service so um, of course it is connected with the previous one so they are very much connected with each other right so how how they feel oh, they are connected with this particular system and the challenge of dealing with different problems so how they are actually taking the challenges you know when they are dealing with the difficult problems so these are the so these all are the components these all are the very very specific components that you need to consider when you are doing the stakeholders analysis in you uh, uh, know uh, uh, function allocation okay so this is very important step once that is done like you have done your hierarchical task analysis you know the all small small component you have a table to understand which is playing which role which component is more important which so you have a rating also you have a data about the stakeholders how the stakeholders are connected to this particular job now there is a time when you are actually you know analyzing about the alternative allocation so how uh, like how we take it so consider the relative capabilities of human and computer it's very important so you know the system because you know the system in detail from your hta you know how the human are present uh, in that particular system from the stakeholders now you are trying to analyze that for a particular task what is the involvement of of that particular operator or what is the involvement of that particular machine in the whole job so you are trying to give the characteristics of 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 human and the machine present in that particular system okay so in some cases you will find human is more important and they are controlling the whole portion okay of a particular task whereas it may happen that it's opposite okay so machine is uh, taking the control in some case only human there is no requirement in a whole process in a whole system in that particular task only the human is actually functioning whereas just opposite only the machine is actually functioning so from hierarchical task analysis whatever data you have you have to try to uh, annotate them according to the involvement in the whole system 
So, first part of this analysis involves consideration of relative capabilities of human and the computer. Again, here everything is relative, okay, it is not absolute. Depending on the changes of the con context, depending on the changes of the small demand, it may change. Okay. So, it is very relative in nature for that particular context, for that particular all conditions if, if considered, then this is the position. Okay. So, that you need to understand. So, so giving a particular definition to the whole system before you start all those things is very, very important, which I mentioned very early in the hierarchical task analysis, so defining the system, right. So, the next part is the analyst should bear in mind both the current and potential skills of the human, okay, that you identified in the stakeholders analysis, right. You understand, uh, you already know the what is their current skill right now, what is their current potential right now and what they can do further, okay, how much you can extend, okay. So, you have better understanding of these two components beforehand. Now, if the task is to be shared between human and computer, it is important to consider whether human or the computer should be in control. So, this way we can represent H, HC, CH and C. What it is? H says that it is only human as I mentioned a uh, no, no, uh, few minutes back. HC means you can understand he, a, H represents human. So, human is in the beginning that means it is a shared activity, shared job. However, human is more powerful over here, more control. Okay? Just opposite CH that means both are shared whereas computer means machines are having more control in that particular task and C means C means this you know only computer okay so only human human computer where human is more computer is less CH computer is more human is less and C that means only computer so you have a better understanding so you 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 have uh, the whole system you can denote using these you know uh, symbols then you review this impact of allocation. So, once once allocations are done, then what you have to do? You have to take a review of it. So, review the potential impact of allocation of function on job satisfaction and task performance by considering two things. One, the context to which that uh, is compatible with or conflicts with the job satisfaction criteria identified in step 2 and the bearing variances in mind. So, you have to keep that what are the variances are there. Okay? And second is the potential for human error uh, because that is always there is a chance that you, know, you, you may have potential human error particularly where the task is you know safety in uh, uh, task is related to more you no know, critical safety and there are security issues. So, based on that you are actually going to review the whole system, whole allocation. You create the allocation and you review the whole system. Also, you need to understand the need for human to be sufficiently involved in the task to say stay alert. Okay. So, alertness is very important. You understand that, you know, very complex system that we are going to analyze using this particular method, right? So, uh, like air traffic, nuclear power industry. So, it is very important. If there is a small mistake, if somebody is not alert for a certain reason, for certain case, there may be a big impact, right? Maybe an accident, maybe a safety issue, maybe a big thing, you know, a lot of cost involved. So, how alert they are, okay, and have sufficient knowledge or not. So, if uh, the person is not knowledgeable enough, there is always a chance that, you know, they do an erratic, uh, erroneous job, right, or they do some kind of mistake. So, to 
understand that you should have better idea about the operators about the human who are involved how alert they are and what is the kind of knowledge they are having sufficient knowledge or not in that particular situation so situation awareness okay how they are alert aware about the whole situation and any likely change in the cost and use of resources including time speed of task completion is important so that you need to take care of so you have to do the review review on the impact of allocation now once all these things are done what you have to do you have to explore the alternative allocation so this you are doing with the existing right now you are trying to develop all alternative so explore uh, no varieties of alternative allocation of function by changing some of the annotation like you know somewhere you try to give human more power whereas you give some control uh, in other cases the to the machine something like that you do the uh, changes and repeating the step that review of uh, you know review the impact of allocation because if you do the changes then definitely the whole scenario is changed and you really need to again review what will be the impact of such allocation so after doing all these alternative you create one alternative two second alternative third alternative you create that and create uh, make a database okay so consider as many alternative as much as possible if your time permits you create more alternatives and start comparing them so when requirements changes or amendments uh, are being done to the computer system are considered in the future so you you do it and it is useful to understand why the original allocation of function was chosen okay originally there was some allocation and once you have developed varieties of alternative you need to compare them and then only you can understand why the earlier one was and why you are proposing the new one and which one is best how do you get that okay so you can have more detail so it's very important or very tedious job over here is like somewhere so you have a tree where you can see one particular function where human is more important or uh, taking the control whereas machine is supporting so hc now in this hc where these differences are coming so you make more detail so more branching of it till we expect that only h and only c is coming so depending on the number of h or depending on the number of c we can have better understanding that how human is more control uh, in in more control or computer is having more control okay so that detailing is very important so um, once we complete this particular stage you know developing the varieties of alternative method alternative allocation uh, data then what we do we drag it to the next level where only you know more detailing by doing the more detailing we can understand how many numbers of h is possible and how many numbers of c is possible okay so we really understand where human is dependent on computer and where computer is dependent on human so those interactions are very clear or uh, you know prominent when we do this detail analysis in the next class what i will do i will take you to an example and we will do the clarification how exactly this system, uh, allocation of function can be possible to implement and i suggest you practice it and then uh, discuss it in the discussion section for today that's it thank you mm -hmm.